I want you to shake hands, protect yourself at all times, come on fighting with the bell, and good luck to both of you, John. Who's that chief second here? All right, you heard the instructions from the referee, Robert Watson, pointed by the Michigan State Athletic Commission, Rose Grable, Rich Fisher, Harold Letterman are the judges. Harold Letterman from New York, Rose Grable, Rich Fisher, both from the state of Michigan. Doug DeWitt, 27-3-3. Perhaps his last hurrah, at least in the sense of having a huge opportunity to vault into the middleweight title picture, as Iran Barkley did by defeating number one rated James Kinchin. Just minutes ago here on Showtime Championship Boxing. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy watching DeWitt and Thomas Hearns round one. Tim, you know Showtime's getting to be known as the, as the station of, of uh, upsets. Donald Curry, James Kinchin. Well, Thomas Hearns doesn't want to be another victim especially here in front of his hometown crowd. He also wants to look good winning. He felt that in the Mark Medell fight, he wasn't at his best. He said it was difficult to make 154. Had trouble with Medell. Eventually the fight stopped, but primarily because of cuts and swelling in the face of Medell. And Hearns hearing booze from the crowd in Las Vegas. He would like to make it a good, quick, short, effective hitman-style knockout over a guy who's never been down and also dangerous with the left hook. Tim, the key is going to be if, if Hearns can keep that jab in DeWitt's face and set him up. Now DeWitt, a natural 160 pounder. As he put it out himself, Hearns coming up. Tim, this, this is the way Hearns started with James Shula. Good left hooks to the body, and he hit him with the right hand on the chin, and it was all over. Hearns nearly stumbled there as DeWitt stepped on his foot accidentally. How do you know it was accidental? <laughs> I was assuming that, Gil, but uh, we'll watch and see if he tries it again in digital. There's that left hook of the wits. And the one minute mark we go. Short right hand landed by the wit. slowly in the first two or three rounds. Feel the effect of Kern's punching power. Get a sense of the range. And then he would come on and he thinks Kern's stamina will be in question in the later rounds. Final seconds of round number one, scheduled for 12. The North American Middleweight Championship. Thomas Hearns to his head. Hand problem, seems to be throwing it freely. Twice now he's had to require treatment on a broken hand following the Hagler fight the last time. We asked him about how that happens, what's happened to him particularly. The real problem with a lot of fighters, especially heavy punches, they, when they're like boxing with people, they like they have a certain thing they do. Boxers have a tendency of, or have an open hand all the time to try to flick off to block punches from like things like that. And when they see an opportunity to shoot their hand, they just they really just shoot it out there and never close your hand, make a full fence and make it tight. And that gives your, uh, your wrist an opportunity to, to bend. And when your hand bends, it takes the impact and it's not strong enough to, to really hold up to that. Well, Gil Clancy, uh, this is something uh, you know a lot about, uh, the physics of boxing. Uh, I'm sure you agree with, with Tommy's assessment there. Well, Tim, the, the purpose of the hand bandage is to protect the metacarpal bones, but you also have to throw your punches straight. It has to be a straight line from knuckle right up to the shoulder. As Tommy said, if you bend your wrist, you can break your hand. And it's happened to him. And he feels like he's learned from that experience. And it's hard to keep a clenched fist all the time, so your, your timing has to be important. You've got to be relaxed in there, but you've got to have it ready to throw. Round number two. 
Scheduled for 12, Thomas Hearns in front of his hometown crowd. Doug DeWitt from Yonkers, New York. Tim, Doug DeWitt landed a good left hook to the body in the first round. And Tommy knows now that DeWitt can snap a pretty good punch off. So he's being a little cautious. DeWitt born in Youngstown, Ohio, but grew up in Yonkers, New York. Actually, he lived in Detroit for a brief time. Ranked number five by the WBA, number 15 by the WBC. There's a solid left by Toon DeWitt. Two left hooks by DeWitt. And there's a right hand over. Now Hearns just sticking out that left hand, and DeWitt not impressed with that at all. Tim, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the key to, to this fight, if Tommy lands a good punch, uh, he has a tendency sometimes to relax and he can get nailed back. If DeWitt punches back, there's a chance he can nail Tommy with a pretty good shot. Hearns' feats are well documented against a lot of the great fighters. His only defeats at the hands of Leonard and Hagler. DeWitt with victories over Teddy Mann, Mike Tinley, not in the same class of fighters that Hearns has been in in his various weight division, coming up from the welders. The Bruno Duran, Pepino Cuevas, James Shure, Wilfred Benitez, all victims of Thomas Hearns. DeWitt, thus far, Tim has been very, very quick with that left hand. Here a minute to go, and DeWitt trying to stay close on this round. He took a real solid right from Tommy there. Side where he figures to be most effective, playing as close as he can to the rangy Thomas Hearns. There's that snapping jab of Hearns. Right hand landed by DeWitt. Good combination. Perfect. And look at DeWitt look over to the corner of Hearns, people, and he does that. He's a real macho man in the real sense of the term. It doesn't really accomplish anything. But it feels uh, important to him, evidently. Well, I guess that's the way he psychs himself up, Tim. Final seconds of round number two. So Doug DeWitt has taken some of the best shots of Thomas Hearns in the early going, right near the end of round number two. Shrug them off. What effect do they have long term over the course of 12? We'll find out. Jacobs, uh, Tim, was a great light heavyweight fighter, very, very smart fighter, and he's the guy that's giving Doug DeWitt the instructions in the corner. There's his brother Glenn in the corner with him and cut man Eddie Aliano. They're in round number three, scheduled for 12, the North American middleweight title at stake. Thomas Hearns, the champion. Good left hook by Hearns, Set, setting it up with the jab now, Tim. That's what he has to do. There's that good snapping jab again.
Judges from Michigan, one from New York. DeWitt locked off left hand underneath from Hearns. And then he punched back to him. That's what you have to do with Tommy Hearns. And that's the one time that he's vulnerable is after he punches. The right hand of the body by DeWitt. He certainly didn't come here for a payday, Tim. He's throwing punches with bad intentions. Plenty of snap. Snappy 
jams by DeWitt. right at the bell. Doug DeWitt returns to his corner and before the fight we asked him about his strategy for this fight. Uh, he having agreed he didn't do so well against McCrory. The first and second round he's got so much power in that right hand and uh, after the third round that's when I would try to take the fight to Hearns. I mean really take it to him. Take chances. You know uh, even if I had to get hit with some shots. Like Hadley said he had to take some to give some. Well, there is Doug DeWitt in round number four, the round he was planning to get started out there. Uh, it was the attack of Thomas Hearns that appeared to dominate. Vaseline on there to try and help those punches slide off those areas that could easily puff up quickly. Number five, and there's a famous jab of Thomas Hearns. DeWitt is a lot quicker than I've ever seen him attempt because Tommy Hearns has fast hands and he's managing to slip and avoid a lot of Tommy's punches. There's a right hand lead. Beautiful move by Tommy Hearns. Stepping jab behind it. DeWitt rushing in and then not happy with himself, saying that's not the way to do it. And I'll work my way in. Another left took a little low by Doug DeWitt. There's yeah, yeah. 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 sliding to the right again. Hearns now appearing to me, Gil, to be trying to stand his ground in the muscle department as well to show me what that he, he can't be muscled back. Something that the whip goes out was hoping would work in his favor. Now Tommy Slide and Moose Gowsey and the Wicks right with him. Showboarding going on. Psychological warfare along with it. Again, the win is not going to outpoint Tommy Hearns. He's going to have to nail him with a big punch. I ran Barkley in the previous fight was winning punches. That might be the win's best chance. Take a shot. Well, he said in his interview there a moment ago that's what he was going to do. Remains to be seen. Good right hand by Good right hand by DeWitt, and Tommy Hearns is copying from DeWitt. He can't hurt me. Another right hand by DeWitt. DeWitt stays there this time. DeWitt trying to get underneath those long arms. Hearns just ties him up. as we go in round five, scheduled for 12, the North American Middleweight Championship, Tommy Hearns defending against Doug DeWitt. Showtime Championship Boxing, get on and go classy. We are ringside at Provo Arena, Detroit, Michigan. In round number five, from the crowd and Miss Lois Hearns, Tommy's mother, who is at all of his fights and always uh, decked out in support of her son and uh, looking uh, just not concerned, but a little nervous, as you might expect, watching her young man in action. A little swelling here on the face of Thomas Hearns. They're working on it. Reminder that the night of the middleweights will be seen again tomorrow 
on a videotape delay here on Showtime, 3 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 2 o'clock Central. So if you came in late after that round or something and missed the first fight, it was a dandy. I ran Barkley upsetting James Kitchen. You can still see it tomorrow here on Showtime. What we saw, the Hearns corner working on some swelling on the face of Thomas Hearns, Gil. Yeah, Tim, it was right on the upper lip, left side of his face, and they were using the end swell on it. They were swelling down. Tim, I don't understand why anybody would, would have booed this fight thus far. You're seeing two well-conditioned, well well-schooled middleweights who are letting it all hang out. Well, I'm not sure whether it's the boos for Hearns for not getting this guy out earlier, or whether they were booing the tactics of Doug DeWitt. It's irrelevant. I agree with you. It's been a, a very tough first five rounds. We're in round six, scheduled for 12. Uh, DeWitt trying to jab more here. Uh, changing jabs with Hearns will be a losing battle. As we said in the beginning, the key is to, to DeWitt to get underneath that jab. The counter for a jab is a left hook, Tim. He should be slipping the jab and trying to hit Tommy with left hooks. And that's his best point. And thus far, he hasn't, he hasn't done it. Instead, he's jamming with Hearns. He got a couple in, and then he got three back. There's a good move inside by DeWitt, and a heavy left hand landed. And Hearns counter punches back. And, and DeWitt is talking to him again. Rated, but he's talking to him. Breath of fresh air, breath of oxygen. Rounds 
stepping some blood from the nose of Doug DeWitt now. There's a cut bleeding over the right eye of Thomas Hearns. It appears to be high on his eyebrow, closer to his nose in the corner of his eye. It's a bad shot. He's bleeding directly down into his eye. And now Tommy Hearns is having, having to fight DeWitt's fight. No more jabbing. Now they're going to war. He has to try to get the wit out of there. And by doing that, it hit, it nailed himself. Well, again, we've had one upset already tonight. I ran Barkley over James Kitchen, the number one ranked middleweight. And Gil, I have to keep going back to my continuing question about Hearns as a middleweight. Although the wit has the reputation, nobody's knocked him down. Question the punching power at 160 pounds of Thomas Hearns. Well, Tim, up to this point, he's, he's nailed the DeWitt with some pretty good shots and nothing's happened. Whether it's DeWitt's chin or the fact that Tommy uh, really doesn't have that much power as a little way, we still don't know. He looks so big and strong, Tommy. He looks like he looks like a full-fledged middleweight, maybe even a light heavyweight from the waist up. But he's hit the DeWitt again. Good shots. Look at DeWitt. He's, DeWitt's using the heel of his glove. He's hooking back on that cut. Oh, and a good sneak move by Hearns. He just stood there. As soon as the break was completed, he fired off a tough combination in the face of DeWitt. This is a war now, Tim. As I said, Tommy had to go to war. Seven scheduled for 12, a dramatic North American middleweight title fight. There's a big right hand by Hearns. Again, the wicked didn't move. Hearns has lost only to Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler. Tim, if, if Tommy Hearns can stay around for a while, uh, Ralph Sitko's cut stuff will take a hold and then in that cut won't be as dangerous. Takes a little time for the cut stuff to work. Hearns have been having his way apart from round two on my card until the damage in round six. There's the end of the seventh round. Let's go back again into round number six and see what happens. Is it worth it? Yes, we can. The wit works his way in. Oh, Looks like they clashed heads right there. Absolutely. Is there blood? Yes, there is. Absolutely. You see the expression. Definitely a butt. The referee made a good call. Accidental butt. And there's the shot. So, so it, uh, it may well have been the referee's call, although it appeared when he went to Larry Hazard that it was Larry Hazard's call, but we can't know that for sure. Lois Hearns, a little concerned about her son's situation in the fight. And they're working on him feverishly now in the corner. You can see it as high on the eyebrow, just inside the roof of his nose. Tim, you know, although Tommy Hearns is winning the rounds, in my opinion, he's not winning them by, by a big margin, and he's taking punishment himself in every round. I'm sure he didn't expect this kind of a fight from Doug DeWitt. But as I say, DeWitt looks to me like a much better fighter than the Doug DeWitt that showed up in, in Las Vegas to fight him up in the forward. Certainly, strategically, he's been a lot better. Tried to work his way in, and he's been in there and used everything he's got. Strength, muscle, roughhouse tactics. Tim, they have... A heavy layer of grease over the left eye of Doug DeWitt. Whether, whether he has a cut, I haven't seen. I didn't see a cut on Doug DeWitt, but it looks like they worked on it. The only blood I saw was from his nose in the last round, not very much. Now some swelling over and under his right eye early in the fight, but did not appear to be serious. Hearns fighting with renewed purpose, knowing what that fight has caused. Sitko's cut stuff has taken hold, so you don't see any blood coming out of the right eye of Tommy Hearns. It takes a little time. And meanwhile, Hearns piling up points here in round number eight. But Doug DeWitt has a pretty quick little jab himself, Tim, even though he's jabbing in the taller guy. Hearns is not countering his jab. Good combination by DeWitt. And there goes DeWitt's head again. Good for 
flurry by DeWitt. Hearn blocked some of those blows, but a good offensive flurry by DeWitt. And certainly was, Tim. Plenty of leverage on those punches. Very effective punches. Here's Witt. The wing has to wing that left hook when he slips. I'm surprised that he hasn't winged it more often than he has. Not appear to be any cut on the face of DeWitt. A little blood from the nose. Mr. Witt is some tough guy, Tim. Well, he's taunting. Well. He's taunting Tommy Hearn, telling him to come out and fight. It's like taunting a locomotive when you're standing on the tracks. Stop turns coming in with a left. Final seconds of round eight.
Then Tommy's letting you all hang out. I, I wonder how much that took out of him. The end of round number 10. DeWitt appeared to have the best of that until the final seconds when he put his hands down. But he had a point taken away. Yeah, that was my end of round problem. number nine. That cost him a point, and here's the round finishing flurry by Thomas Hearns. But this was mainly because DeWitt, after this exchange, just really let Hearns fire away. Look at his hands down. Didn't punch back. Hearns took advantage. Tim, I don't know how much Tommy Hearns has left. I mean, this has been some pace, and he just expended a lot of energy last round. I think this round is going to be the key round of the fight. Remember, this is a 12-round fight for the NABF middleweight title. We're in round 10. Tim Ryan and Joe Clancy, a dramatic middleweight display. Thomas Hearns cut in round number six. He's had problems since that point. We have scored a round for DeWitt, and he might have won the last one, except for that point being taken away from the low blow. And now, now, now Sitko has gel foam on the cut on Tommy Hearns' eyes, but if you, if you hit that gel foam, that will go. And DeWitt won right after it. That's also a target for DeWitt. the substances that are allowable, Gil. Well, Tim, nowadays they only allow adrenaline chloride. Is that involved in this? You can, you can use the gel foam, Tim. You can't, you, you can't use anything with an, an iodine base. Anything that will burn the tissue. We heard him say that story, but the wit will not back up. Damn it, Tim. Hearns is putting the rounds in the bank. Some loose tape on the glove of Hearns. A repair needed in the Hearns corner. Well, it didn't take Manny Stewart long. He's a real pro. I had the scissor ready. Now, for the wit to win this fight, I was like, again, I say he has to land a big punch. And to land it, he has to throw it. He has knocked off that gel foam off the corner of the eye of Thomas Hearns, but there is no bleeding at the moment. It seems to me DeWitt is in position to throw that left hook and then doesn't throw it. Now there may be a cut at the corner of the left eye of Thomas Hearns. In addition to one over his right eye. Here goes DeWitt with his head using an elbow. on the part of Doug DeWitt. He's going to do everything he can against the heavy favorite Thomas Hearns in his hometown. We have Hearns comfortably ahead on our card through nine rounds. Tim, here's an example where Tommy Hearns had to look good. Everybody said, well, did he knock Doug DeWitt out, Doug knocked the Iron Man out? Now he's worried about surviving and winning. Two rounds to go after this one concludes. We're in the final seconds of round 10. Right hand over by DeWitt. There's right hand by Hearns at the bell. And an extra cheer from DeWitt. That angers Thomas Hearns. Well, this is a partisan crowd, as you might expect for Thomas Hearns. But believe me, there are a lot of people who are cheering the performance of Doug DeWitt. Either they came here to cheer him, or they felt that he's giving them more than they expected, and they're responding to the fact that he's made this a dramatic middleweight championship out. Push this ball backwards. Double your punches, Doug. Trip on your Come right down to the dog fight. Sit down and fight like hell on the ropes. You understand? Sit down with Doug and both hands to the bottom. Wide open, Doug. And then come to the top. You understand? Thomas Hearns 
Rogers out with some of that same protection to try to stop the flow of blood over the right eye. Didn't see any serious damage in that what appeared to be a slight cut in the corner of his left eye. May simply have been blood from the cut over the right eye. They're trying to get a closer look. into that 11th round and see Doug DeWitt. Now we lost our videotape there. Technical difficulty. Well, his corner saying go for the gusto. I don't know whether they think he's got enough on point to win this fight with just a good busy round. In our view, he's got to stop Thomas Hearns to have any chance to win. Although, uh, again, uh, credit to his gritty display, he's, he's tried awful hard, but again, he's got to keep up the pace, got to make something happen. Not enough to say he can take a punch. Now some loose tape on DeWitt's club. Well, that's 1-1 one, one, one in that score now, Tim. Let's see if this is, oh, he's just as quick as Manny Stewart. He's got his scissor out. A little more advice from Herschel Jacobs. My advice would be to bob and weave and wing. But this has been a night that Thomas Hearns so won't forget. And well, he is talking about going up to meet the 
WBC light heavyweight champion, the new one, Dennis Andres of England, if he wins here tonight. And then waiting out the middleweight picture, his desire to win four championships still very much in his mind. But I'm afraid I have to continue to question what, how effective he can be at 160 and 175. As a puncher, not to say he can't win fights and become a champion. Because he can box is so beautiful, that'll win you a lot of fights. Superb boxing exhibition by Hearns again. We've come to expect it. And we've expected his grit and determination. A proud champion. Not about to let Doug DeWitt take this away from him here tonight in front of his hometown crowd. A minute to go in the fight. Then I can't understand the way DeWitt's performing now, can you? No, this is back to the McCrory fight. Same idea as though the fight's somehow over and Again, you're just out there thinking you've got one for some reason and finishing up. It's a, an odd mental state that Doug DeWitt is in. Well, there's a kid. Timmy has a lot of ability. I, I just don't see anything like him in, in his ability. It's a question of you using it. He slips punches. He can punch. He takes a punch. But he doesn't put it all together. Good left hook by Tommy Williams. Final 30 seconds of the fight. Good right hand by Tommy Williams. Hearns trying to put him away. He'd love to finish this with a knockout. It's not likely to be forthcoming. No knockout, Tim. We're now in the final seconds, so there will be no knockout. Thomas Hearns appreciating the effort of Doug DeWitt, even though there was a lot of roughhousing going on in there. Doug DeWitt again shows that he can go the distance against anybody in the middleweight division. I would like his chances in that respect against light heavyweights. But winning is another problem. He's won 27 times. He's lost three. I think he's going to lose this one. But for Doug DeWitt, given the big opportunities and the big fights, just doesn't seem to have that mental ability to use all the tools and go after it. Well, that's, he, that's the kind of a fighter that's fairly an enigma, Tim, and he can drive a, a train of really crazy because I see the ability that this kid has, and it, it's a question of putting everything together. I don't see anything that he can't do. You're in charge, Gil. I'm going up to the ring. Okay, Tim. All right. All right, now here was the turning point in the fight, and this is what put DeWitt in the fight. There's come DeWitt's head up, and there's the butt, and it opened an angry cut over Tommy Hearn's right eye. And you can see Tommy grimace from the effect of the butt, and it does. And that gentleman, Doug DeWitt, after he butted him, he hit him with the right hand, so let's try to open it a little further. When he's in the ring, Doug DeWitt, he's trying to win any way he can. They have a referee. As long as the referee uh, lets him do things, he's going to do them. I was very, very impressed, but this is a fight. It was a fast-paced fight, two quick fighters, two well-conditioned fighters. Tommy Hearns was just by far the better technical boxer. Landed most of the clean punches, and in my opinion, won almost every round in the fight. Although, in every round, he was in jeopardy. The cut could have been opened. He could have been nailed by a good punch, because believe me, Doug DeWitt can punch. I've seen him knock out some pretty good fighters. It was an exciting fight. Uh, I'm sure that Tommy would like to have got a different result. He was trying to get a knockout, especially after those last fight with Mark McDowell when he was booed for the first time in his life. He wanted to have an impressive performance. All right, now let's go up to a ring announcer, Mike Popper.